I don't know of a more misunderstood concept in the golf swing than the release. What happens from the moment of impact forward and how the club squares. Today, we're gonna to talk about squaring the club and how you might think the club is rotating through impact, but it's actually not. Perception is not reality. Let's take a look today at release. Hey folks, thanks for watching my channel today. We're gonna to discuss a much misunderstood part of the golf swing, which is called release. Now, most people think of release as being a rotation of the trail hand or they, what they see and, and what you see on video, and you even see this on Mo Norman's swing, is you, you see the club face you know, square at impact and then at some point past impact, the club is rotating and you see a rotation of the club face. And so we equate this rotation of the face to a rotation of the hand. And I want to tell you that, that you got to be a little careful on when you talk about release because what, you're not, what you don't want to do is roll the trail hand, which is what many people think is going on in that position. But I want to show you today two things. Number one, that it's not a rolling of the hand. And number two, Mo's thoughts about this. Because when I talked to Mo about his release, he absolutely felt that the club was staying square for a very long period of time. So how can the club do two things? How can it stay square for a long period of time and at the exact same time see the face rotate? All right, so this is where it gets kind of confusing. I wanna clear that up with you today. So the first thing is let's understand what's going on and what is release. So most people think that you have to rotate the hands through the golf ball to square the face. I'm gonna tell you right now that with the single plane golf swing, we've eliminated trail hand rotation. Let me show you how this works. So at address, obviously we have a tilt to the body and the hand is in a rotated position. Let's just call it somewhere around 45 degrees rotated here at address. This hand will go back and come down, go back and come down from address to the top to impact. And at the moment of impact, the trail arm is bent and the hand has not made a rotation. So there's no rotation in the trail hand. So please understand that we're making a straight line, non-rotational motion with the trail hand, all right? But here's what we wanna talk about. What's happening after, at the strike, and after the strike. Now, I'm gonna to go, to, go ahead and just step, step here into impact, put my body in impact, and I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna continue rotating my torso, and if you notice, if my arms are in this position and my hand hasn't changed its position and I rotate the torso, the club will absolutely stay square for a period of time. So in order for this feeling to occur and, and the club to stay square for a period of time, it is dependent on the torso rotation and the positions of the hands and the arms. So what's happening here is you're not doing this. You're not flipping the club. You're not rotating the hands you're moving the torso and the arms are coming into impact. And as the shoulders and torso move, the club, by maintaining your hand position, can stay square for a period of time. And now here's where, here's where the release comes in. So after you've gone through this impact in the, in the continuous of the rotation, the trail arm gets to an extension as the lead arm starts to fold. So what you're getting is an extension of the trail arm, a skipping of a rock, a skipping of a rock, and an extension of the arm. That's what I consider the release, is when the arm extends and the torso and shoulders continue to move, see the torso's opening up, you get what I call release. At no point in any of that did I rotate my hand. That's what I want you to know here. And so what's happening here is you're getting extension as the torso is moving. Now, here's what's interesting about this. This position here, obviously the club is square, feels the same as that position there. See that, I'm just turning. See that? And that turn, see the face, gets what people call released. So you could say that this relationship is staying the same from here to here. It's staying the same, see that? And and so what's, let me, let me ask you this question, what's turning? Is it the hands or the torso? And the, and the answer is both. See, that's what I'm saying is you can't sit there and say the hands are rolling 
if you're not relating what's going on with the torso as well. So it's a combination of body turn, body turn, and arm extension. Let me do that with, with kind of a little chip shot here. It's body turn, arm extension, which then strikes the golf ball and releases the leverage, releases the leverage through the ball. It's the arm extension is dependent on torso position. Let me go back through that. Because what I, the last thing I want you to do is think there's a rotation of the hands because it's really a turn of the torso, a turn of the shoulders moving and arm extending. And that's what releases the golf club. So see that extension of the arm? And that, if you watch the face angle, the face angle will go through a period of time where it stays square, then it gets back, and the club face will actually get back to the plane, which many people see as rotation, but I'm telling you right now, and this is why Mo felt it, Mo felt that it was staying square for a very long period of time because he felt this, the, uh, the hands being in this position, and the body moving, but the club will stay square for a very long period of time, and even when it's fully extended, he never felt this. You don't want to feel this rotation. Now, there's a caveat to this. That being, if you're a conventional golfer and you're not, and you're not any, any non-rotational position at address, what I mean by that is, Mo had a most trail hand, like I told you, is in this position, in a, non, in, a, in a non-rotated position, where it can go back and down. If your grip is on top of the club, your trail hand, you will have trail hand rotation which is why every mechanic of the single plane swing and the things I talk about with Mo Norman relate. One thing relates to the next. The position of the hand at address relates to the non-rotation of the backswing, which then relates to the proper extension of the arm, eliminating rotation of the trail hand, which is why the club can square up in such a consistent fashion. So I just wanted to talk about release today. I was getting some questions on the channel. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And please answer, keep asking questions below, and I'll make sure I produce a video that answers any, swing, any question about the single plane swing or Mo Norman.